even though I like equations and I like math, I tend not to put them in my talks, and you don't see a lot of them in my blog posts or in my videos. Let me explain why. Mathematicians are just as human as everyone else, and they've got the same working memory constraints. Listen to this sequence. 202-469-2174-879-722-026-830711. What were the first three digits of that? Do you remember? How about the first seven? Chances are you forgot a bunch. That's not because I told you something difficult. We can all count to ten. But your working memory throws things away and can't hold it in there until you've committed that stuff to long-term memory. Uh, a lot of those numbers were childhood phone numbers that I had so I could repeat that sequence because those things are in long-term memory for me. Similarly, a lot of the symbols used in technical classes in science and math, once you get familiar with that symbol, it means something to you. It's stored in long-term memory. Maybe if you're a statistician, uh, X with a bar on top means sample average. You also know what a sample average is. So you see that X bar? There's no mystery there. You don't have to um, put any more effort into remembering it than if I said two or four. But imagine you've never seen that before and you've never seen P hat and you don't know what Y stands for or Z. You don't know that Epsilon means any positive quantity, however small you like. And your professor is just using these terms around you. You can't store all of that. So you'll just go to sleep because you'll lose the plot. Uh, in a lot of mathematics classes, unfortunately, a whole lot of symbols are suddenly defined for the first time, they're written up on the board, then the board is erased, and the professor keeps going. The poor students couldn't possibly keep track of what was what. Only the folks who had already committed that stuff to long-term memory have any chance of succeeding in following the lesson. So here's why I don't use equations in my talks. You need equations when you're going to cook. Math is a lot like cooking. You follow the, the recipe book. You don't need to write out the recipe on the board for students if they don't even know whether they want to cook the dish. Instead, you need to tell them why they might like the dish, when they might want to consider cooking it, what are the gotchas, was it Queen Victoria's favorite dish, is it vegetarian, and so forth. And then you have to tell them where they can find the recipe that they can follow step by step if they need to. And by the time they get there, they understand why they want that recipe and then at their own pace they will be able to go and figure out what all those symbols mean and um, practice a little bit like practicing a phone number until they've got it and they can read it. Now if you don't believe me mathematicians, try it yourself. Take any technical talk that you're about to give and look at the symbols that you've used. Any symbol that you suspect even one person in your audience might not be familiar with Replace it with a character from an alphabet that you aren't fluent in. Like if you don't speak Chinese, use Chinese characters. Replace all symbols with Chinese characters and then try give your talk again. If you stumble, you've done it wrong. If your working memory can't handle what this particular symbol stands for, someone in your audience uh, who's not familiar with the field will also not be able to follow. And you are not doing them any favors, you're also not doing science and math any favors. The beauty of math is that it's a logic with a formal language in service of solving puzzles. That's pretty cool. Science and math can be a lot of fun. For some reason, tradition insists on making it as unfun as possible. What we're doing here is we're playing Legos. Legos are fun. I can't believe people pay me to, to play with Legos all day. But that's what you do with mathematics and programming and science. But if it's taught by writing out recipes on a board, where you lose the students because you overwhelm their working memory and you only favor the students who go and sneakily learn uh, by themselves at home, a lot of folks are going to think that they're bad at math when they're not. For more information, check out the link in the description below.